to Vanessa always backing us up. Hallelujah. Let me welcome once again everybody that's watching us online. I know because of the rain and uh, this uh, tropical storm that's going on, uh, a lot of people that is the salt of the world became afraid to go into the rain, right? Because we are the salt of the world. We don't, you know, get very close to water. But thank you for joining us here this morning. And we are in our series, Active Faith. Today I'm preaching on the chapter uh, 6 and chapter 7 in the book. The book that we uh, publish for you guys is in Amazon, is in our website. And I'm preaching this message because I feel fit for this moment in our church and for you personally. Hebrews chapter 11 Verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, we want revelation this morning. We want the heavenly food to feed our spirit and soul. We know that when you speak into our hearts, things change. Only you has this power, God. And I pray that you move in this room Move it into every living room, TV room, whoever is watching or listening to this message. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you stir our faith today so we can grow and respond in an active faith. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. So, in recent days, we have witnessed unprecedented events. That's a new word, actually, that comes to my vocabulary, unprecedented Unfolding this world, disease, racial disruption, imminent wars. The news presents us this world on the brink of collapse. So it will be great if we could be warned by God before any terrible thing will happen. You know, and, and I don't know if you guys are following up the whole politics and battles that's going on. Did, you know, the, the politics that are in the office right now knew or did not know about what is happening right now. And there's all this dispute going on. But it would be awesome if we knew that anytime soon this world will be destroyed and new heaven and new earth will be established. Why I say it would be great? Because life will be easier, much easier. You're going you're gonna to be prevented from mistakes. You're going to be focused. Terrible decisions will not be made because now you know for sure that this world is passing. So your heart will be in the right place, in the right direction. You're not going to waste your time. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned by God concerning events yet unseen, in reverent fear, construct an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. This is the title of my message, Faith, Fear, and Family. This is the, the tripod that sustained this man of God. Faith, fear, and family. The word fear here is the reverent fear. It's not, it's not fear to be afraid of. It's this reverence of God. It's you, you give account to God's word. So this is the good fear. Are you guys following what I'm saying? So this is the standard we should have as well. Faith, fear, and family. Noah had the privilege of being warned of things before they come to pass. But how did he get this knowledge? Noah didn't have any previous event to look as an example or guide him to prepare for what was coming. He didn't have any note that he could point that could point him to what to do. But we have a note. More than that, we have a complete guide teaching what to do and what not to do in times. We also have a lot, and I mean a lot of evidences warning us that this world will pass. God wrote us a letter. He showed us that this world is not worth of our hearts. That faith moved all the overcomers in the past. And He still has the power to move us to go to the finish line. 2 Peter chapter 3, 13, But according to His promise... We are waiting for new heavens and new earth, a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Revelation chapter 21, 
end of the end of your Bible, second to last chapter, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. We have a clear warning written in the Word of God. We have signs pointing us that this world will pass. But why do we have such a hard time acknowledging, taking heed to this truth? It is a faith problem. And my goal this morning is to fix that problem. How are we going to do this? Number one, take the prophetic word of God as the final truth. Numbers chapter 23. God is not man that he should lie, or son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he... Has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? So, the fact that many people belittle the truth of the word of God makes them sink and drown in times such as this that we are in. Faith that prevails is the faith that resides in the word of God. We should apply our faith in the word. And not waste our focus and time in the end times prophets, YouTube preachers, or all what the news says, or the end of the world events. No, no, no. Our faith is in the Bible, is in the Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. Faith in what? Faith in the Word of God, solely in the right source, the truth, living a life based on the natural events or whatever the news or the celebrities or the youtuber you follow uh, it, it it doesn't it doesn't sustain you if we insist on living by sight we will be slaves to the natural circumstances will easily knock us down and our confidence will collapse we must learn to see in the spirit and walk by what we believe god will do based on what he said in his word. So here's the point. Don't give attention. Don't give your precious time, your ear to the lies of the devil. The devil suggests things, but our focus should be in the word of God. God is protecting us. He promised us that this world will pass, but a new heaven, a new earth is coming. John chapter 20. Verse 29, Jesus said to the disciples, If you believe because you have seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You know, like we're saying right now, we have hurricanes. It's an yearly event in Florida. It's inevitable. You're going to come. It's just part of our lives. But most of these hurricanes, they are just tropical storms. So I have... But if you don't believe now, there is no use of faith then. The Bible says that faith is to rely on the yet unseen. Now, we need to trust in the good news now to endure bad news then. Let me clarify what I mean. Luke chapter 17. Just as it was in the days of Noah... So will it be in the days of the Son of Man, in the end times? They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Verse 30, so will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed? So Jesus warned the disciples about the coming suffering, about death, persecution, about the sadness of injustice and loss and death. But yet also Jesus shared about resurrection. Jesus preached about hope. He preached about the Holy Spirit and that He is coming back. John chapter 16, 33. Have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world so we must believe before all bad things come to pass because when they happen 
We will be able to believe in good things and blessings in the midst of the suffering. Yes, suffering, terrible circumstances, even death are, are not a problem in themselves. But to not have faith in the word of God is the ultimate problem. Because you don't have resource to endure. Romans chapter 8, 36. For your sake, we are being killed all day long. This is Apostle Paul saying. He says, I face suffering. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, Paul ends, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. Yes, there are sufferings. There are circumstances that we don't have control. But because I believe in Christ, my source of peace and joy, He is the one that sustains me because I believe in Him. When it happens, I know that through all these things, I am more than conquer through Him who loved me, who loved us. So the second principle I want to insist today is that we have to have an active faith. Like what are we going to do with the forecast? What are we going to do with the information you got? Faith should always lead us into action. James chapter 2, 17, the apostle James says, So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, action is dead. So in my story about the mobile home resident, that his action will be simply move out and find a safer place. But in Noah's case, it meant him obeying God's instruction and building a boat that will sustain a flood even when there was no rain at all. They never had experienced rain until that time. They never saw water coming from the sky. They never saw that before. At least the Bible doesn't register so my question is, where should you put your faith into action? Maybe just like Noah, we just need to build an ark to save our family from this wicked and destined to fail world. We should start showing reverently obedience and heed to the word of God as the truth. Express a faith that fears God to the point of following him taking action and when our family sees our genuine faith they also may enter in God's ark of salvation and receiving Jesus as Christ and Savior of their lives I say this uh, considering my own example you know I try other ways to convince my family about salvation and faith I remember you know spending time with my father as a doctor he has this you know very rational concrete heavy closed mind for faith and was super hard because I was trying to use all my arguments but in the end of the day I was failing my family you know when I will leave my room totally mess up or when I didn't help out with the finances in the house I never show that actual obedience of a man of a woman of God that reverently fears God so fear of God and faith they walk together Amen. when my kids obey me I love that because they show appreciation they show that they take heed to my words I'm not only glad that they do what I expect them to do homework completed room in order cleaned but because they express confidence in my love and care for them through trusting me and acting out of that trust so this is this is what it means this fear this obedience this reverently obedience it is they, they they consider my love in such a way that they trust my love and act out of this love they avoid something that I advise them to not do it they show me fear so to speak fear to my words meaning that they trust and respect me so the proportion of our faith or trust is directly connected to the level of our obedience that's why Genesis chapter 6 verse 22 the Bible says about Noah Noah did this he did all that God commanded him why Hebrews reveal why because he reverently feared God he took heed on the word of God so I want a faith like that. I want a faith that it's 
active, like whenever God speaks, I will take my whole heart into it. So acting faith, but also rest and find the favor of God. This, this is the order. Because don't think that the fact that we are acting toward the faith and the trust, we're going to give you some sort of um, pride or self-reliance, self-righteousness, uh, something for you to be proud about yourself. We saw that Noah had to act in faith by actually building something for God. Yet Noah shows us another very interesting aspect of faith. The very name Noah in the original means rest. So if you read Genesis chapter 6 verse 8, you read, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. If the word Noah means rest, I could read this verse or paraphrase the reading like, Rest found grace, found favor in the eyes of of the Lord. It's almost like God was saying, Noah, first, believe. Noah, second, act. Noah, act resting in me. And now, Noah, don't worry, my favor is going to crown you. So this is the order. We should be identified as the ones that believe and rest and experience the favor of God. So that's when I gave up to pretty much Try to convince my family. I, I rested my cares and my worries to God. But I actively show obedience to God's word. I was very active in the church. I was extremely obedient to the word of God. I was really dedicated into my devotions and always praying for my family. And the result of that is that my whole direct symbolism, they were all affected by this. Like all of them. No exception. No, why? Because it's not that I had something in myself or an effort or some sort of uh, um, words or technique. It was just like believing, acting, resting, and seeing the favor of God. God working for us. So the ark is for whoever believes. Every time a person hears the gospel, that person will be confronted with salvation, but in the same time, condemnation. So... To be accurate with the message of the gospel, salvation only makes sense if the listener understands the imminent perdition and damnation. Only those who regard the raw and hard truth, the reality of powerlessness to save yourself, only those can receive God's free gift. First, people have to realize they are sick, that they are doomed, before they will accept the remedy and redemption. But who here in this world will going to take a vaccine for a disease that they don't believe that even exists? Now you know what I'm talking about. People are doing all this controversy about the vaccine because a lot of people don't even believe there is a problem. So we have a, a great situation, a terrible situation here because the world does not call sin... As seen. And unfortunately, among some Christian environments, it's not a problem of sin anymore. It's just a psychological problem or a trauma. And the maximum they're going to even say is just a behavior disorder. They won't call sin and that's why there is no salvation. John 3.19 says, And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Verse 20, for everyone who does, who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. So the gospel is like this beam of light inside a very dark cave. Whoever lives there in this cave might joyfully accept the the action of light, because finally they can get out of their darkness. But some might hate the light because now their eyes hurt. And because they decided to stay blind, they don't like the light. Some cases, they don't even admit the possibility of speaking about faith. So the Bible says that Noah's active faith not only saved 
But it's very clear in the text, Hebrews chapter 11, verse uh, 7. The faith of Moses condemned the world. It, it, somehow, his faith, his obedience, his life with God condemned the world. That was never God's first plan. The ark was built for salvation for whoever desired to get in. Whoever desired to come and receive salvation, the door was open. However, truth to be said, our active faith might also judge the unbelieving hearts around us. When the Bible reveals sin and condemns the sinner, the goal is to bring salvation by the realization, acknowledgement of the weakness of man. Man, you and I, we have no power to fix ourselves. That's the purpose of the Old Testament law. The law was like a mirror. Romans chapter 3 verse 20 says, By the works of law, no human being will be justified in the sight. Since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So like a mirror, the law has the power to show all our failures and shortcomings. And the idea here is that once you're going to see yourself compared to the holiness, high moral standards of God, you're going to say, I cannot fix myself. I can't save myself. I need a savior. The law has to illuminate your heart and bring you to the gospel. But just like a person that sees in a mirror in the dark room, can't see much, only the law without the gospel is, is dangerous. You know, like if a kid has access to a mirror in the darkness, this kid can misuse the mirror and hurt himself and others with the law. Are you guys following what I'm saying? Condemning others. Hurting himself, punishing himself, or trying to create this, you know, mind-made religion. Or, if you are not seen precisely because you don't have the light of the gospel to illuminate the room, and you're trying to insist to see yourself through the, the mirror, you now might ever even try to change the mirror because you don't like the image you see. So now you're going to see people minimizing the, com the, the commandments, trying to interpret with philosophy and humanistic perspective. That's what we see a lot of religion trying to do. The law is a mirror that shows how perfect God is and how distant we are from that perfection. But the only way to see the use of the law with the right perspective is with the light of the gospel. Someone once said that if God thought that our greatest problem was a financial crisis, he would have sent us an economist. If God had perceived that our greatest need was entertainment, he would have sent us a comedian. If our pressing difficulty was politics, he would have sent us a politician. If he had perceived that our greatest need was health, he would have sent us a doctor. However, our greatest problem is sin, is our separation from him, is our rebellion, death. Therefore, God sent us a Savior. He is perfect. And whoever believes in Jesus enters in Jesus. Get into Him, so to speak, they enter into the ark. If we are in Him, we are in the ark. So our lives should always express that salvation. That salvation is available for whoever wants to get in. And that this world is passing. And I know, again, speaking about that this world is passing bothers a lot of people because when you know that this world is passing, okay, you already uh, imagine you as, as, as a fellow uh, uh, resident on Noah's village and Noah speaks about this rain coming from the sky and they're going to have a flood in the middle of nowhere, but you never saw that before. But you start to feel the smell of the water in the air. The humidity is getting higher and higher. You start to see that the soil is getting humid as well. Something is going on. But this forces you to deem that not, thing, not all the things in this world we have control. Right now, one of the most annoying aspects of all this crisis is that people are realizing that 
they, they don't have control as they thought they had about their lives, about their health, about the surroundings, even about their finances, which is awesome. This is a really good thing to happen because now we can place our trust and hope in the right place. Now, again, no, no reverence to pop culture, but uh, if you never watch it, you should watch Matrix. And Morpheus, Morpheus come to Neo and said, it is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. And you ask Morpheus, what truth? And he replied, that you are a slave, New. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, into a prison that you cannot taste or see or touch. Again, it's very hard. We prefer to count this as a sci-fi movie, right? We just want to say, no, nah, this is just a movie. Uh, but in somehow, the Bible says the same truth. There is nothing you can do about this world. Our best behavior would never be enough to settle the account. Here, the on, there are only two ways to react. Feel condemned, outraged, and now we're going to create excuses and embrace distractions, or you're going to be convinced, humble, believing God's solution, accepting His righteousness gift that comes by faith. Proverbs chapter 22 says, The reward for humility and fear... Of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Who doesn't want that? So let's throw away our arrogance, our pride, our presumption. Let us be humble. And let us get into this inheritance of the righteous. Because whoever believes has salvation not only for him, but for his whole entire family. That's God's plan. Salvation for you and for your entire family. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah constructed an ark for the saving of his household. Noah's act of faith led him to make an ark to save his entire family. As Christians, that means that when we are not much successful into preaching the gospel to our friends, colleagues, into the world... We should never despise our responsibility to bring salvation to our family. No matter what, our family should be our first to see our act of faith. This kind of Christianity that cares about everybody in the world but forgets about family is not Christianity whatsoever. Let me prove that to you. First Timothy chapter 5 says, But if anyone does not provide, and I know he's speaking about money, but if you can, if you should be responsible to provide money, you should be responsible to provide salvation. For those that do not provide for his relative and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I don't know if it, you, I can be tougher than Paul right now. So I remember being young in my youth group in my church, and we're experiencing this small revival over there, and everybody dreamed to be missionary somewhere in the world, you know, I'm willing to preach Jesus to the nations, but, you know, truly we're just trying to uh, escape route to not preach the gospel to our annoying siblings, like, I'd rather go to, you know, one of the persecuted countries that actually preach the gospel to my brother, like, he's so annoying. So I want to encourage you, like Noah, to build an ark for your family, to be intentional toward them, to invest time, to create opportunities. So don't save energy when you have a chance to invite people to your ark, to your life group, to the church building here and enjoy a service with us. Pray for the salvation of your house. Ask God for strategies to reach your family for Jesus. I remember before coming to the United States, I knew I would spend, you know, uh, almost five, seven, six years uh, being unable to go back to Brazil. So I actually gathered the whole family in my house in the Christmas celebration season. And I didn't have much money to do it, but I said, I have to, you know, it's my, it's my last chance to maybe, you know, express the ark of salvation for my grandmother 
uh, that was extremely syncretistic and, you know, religion, but in the wrong sense. And I, I want to just show the ark for my family. And I remember I even paid for some of my assemblies to be in the party that I will give to them. So I don't know where God is going to leave you, lead you to do things to express salvation for your family. But the promise is, Acts chapter 16, and I'm almost closing the message, 1631, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. That's the promise. Only you? No. You will be saved in your entire household. That's the will of God for us. So I always like to re remind myself that if I could be saved, if God in His amazing grace and mercy found a way to convince my heart and change my mind, and I was raised in that family, that means that my whole entire family has the same potential. You guys follow this, the, the train of thought here? It's the same idea. So I want you to believe once again for the salvation of your house. This is the act of faith. In the first list of Hebrews chapter 11, all these heroes of faith, we see a, a progression of faith. We see a, a growing faith. We have the story of Abel that brought a sacrifice that pleased God, but Abel died. The second character is Enoch, Enoch walked with God and he did not die. So much better than Abel. Now the third character is Noah. Noah walked with God and he also were, were, was saved. But the Bible says that not only him was saved, it was him and his entire household. I believe God wants to bring us to grow in our faith. A faith that is not going to save you alone, but is going to bring your entire family household Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 again by faith Noah being warned by God concerning events yet unseen in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household by this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith so never give up on your family Never think they are unable, unfit to be saved. Never ever close the door of your ark until all of your family is inside. So it is time for us to believe for the salvation of our homes again. Let's always stand up this morning. Before you pray for the salvation of your family. I want to give an, a chance, an opportunity for whoever is watching us or even visiting us this morning to take heed to the Word of God. God doesn't need to prove anything to you, but let me tell you something. He already proved. He proved by sending His Son. He gave us the Word, the prophetic Word that is being fulfilled. And honestly, just open your eyes and look around. Like, we, you don't need to believe in prophecy to know that we are in a prophetic time right now. That we are, again, at the edge, at the end of all things. But you don't need to be condemned with the world. The ark is still open for whoever believes. I want to invite the church to help me out with this prayer. The eternity of some people can be changed. If they repeat this prayer with faith. And I want a church to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe. The work is done. The ark is ready. I can come in and be saved. Today, I give you my heart. I believe in you, Jesus. You are my Savior. You are my God. Jesus Christ. I give you my heart. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Father, right now I want to pray for families in this place. Families that are being shattered. Families that are collapsing. Families that are crumbling apart. 
I pray, Father, that in the midst of all these tragedies, in the midst of all this crisis that is bringing to the surface so many wrong things in the family, I pray for salvation in the families represented in this place, God. Oh, Father, together, we pray for our siblings. We pray for our relatives. I pray for our families right now. If you have a member of your family that you care, that you love, that you don't want to see being lost, being condemned with the world, what about you lift it up one of your hands and, and pray for this person. Pray, name this person before God right now. Let's believe that salvation is for you and for your entire household. Let us believe again that God wants to save our family as we fearfully obey God, as we fearfully abide in His Word. Come on, lift it up one of your hands. Name this person before God this morning. You can trust that God is using your words right now of crying, of prayer, to reach out to this person. Just believe in your heart. Just believe in your heart and rest. Rest the work of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray. We pray for salvation in these days, God. We pray, Father, that you create these opportunities, these moments, these holy moments, where we can present the gospel to our beloved ones, our loved ones in our family. Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that in a supernatural, powerful way you move, bringing conviction of sin, justice, righteousness, and salvation. Oh, Father, I pray. I cry out before you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we see salvation happening and we keep our ark open to save all of them. Let's sing it. Let's worship Jesus as we close this service this morning.